The purpose of today's press briefing is for our elections directorate to update the nation on the ongoing voter registration blitz. However, before we get into that important update, a few remarks. Now, in the next few months, the citizens head to the polls to decide on our collective future. There have been many elections before, all of which have not quite brought the change we des desire. However, in true Zimbabwean form, the citizens refuse to give up or lose hope. We've been overwhelmed by the hunger of people, young and old, of all creeds, tribes and genders for change across all provinces and their hunger for a Zimbabwe that works for the many and not the few. Since we announced our new movement on the 24th of January 2022, it's grown beyond all expectations. Uh, they thought they buried us. They didn't realize that we're proverbial seeds. Now, Change Champion and Chief Advocate Nelson Chamisa recently laid out the Zimbabwe agenda for 2023, which is based on five pillars, as you all know. The first being that we're going to lead a citizen's campaign and a broad-based volunteers program. This is going to see an unprecedented mass movement of citizens coming together uh, like never seen before on the continent. Uh, and we've got an energetic team of volunteers and we encourage all citizens to get involved in this campaign. It won't be a lead campaign, it will be a grassroots campaign. The second pillar is that uh, we've revolutionized and changed our candidate selection process. We're going to have citizen representatives. Communities are going to select their own candidates by consensus. In true democratic fashion, we're going to give communities a voice in deciding who their representatives are. This is a truly democratic system that gives power back to communities whose voices have not been heard so strongly in the past. The third pillar of Agenda 2023 is the need for us to all secure and defend the vote. Uh, President Nelson Chamisa indicated that we're going to have polling agents at every single polling station across the length and breadth of Zimbabwe. He also indicated that we're looking at a number of about 44,000 uh, polling stations, uh, polling agents across uh, the country. And this also requires all citizens to make sure that they participate in defending uh, their votes so that we win the nation for change. The fourth pillar is around alternative policy formulation. Uh, we're going to have a new Great Zimbabwe blueprint that sets out our, sets out our plan uh, to govern the nation. The fifth pillar is around global advocacy for change, where we're going to be working with and lobbying SADC, the African Union, the United Nations to ensure that we internationalize the struggle for a better Zimbabwe. So in line with this agenda, our next steps, uh, obviously we've got the voter registration blitz that my uh, colleague uh, from the electro, uh, elections directorate is going to speak to just now. But after that, we're going to go straight into community candidate selection by consensus. And just to be clear, the communication as to when this will be rolled out will be made officially through our official channel. So make sure you tune in for that. We're going to ensure that the process is transparent and widely publicized so everybody can look forward to that. And if you do have an interest in standing, please uh, look out for that announcement so that communities also step up. We want to ensure that in all streets, all communities, all villages, citizens have a voice in deciding who represents um, us as citizens in the upcoming government. The next step, obviously, is around proclamation. In terms of our electoral law, Mr. Mnangagwa is to proclaim the election date. Thereafter, the voters' roll will be closed. And after that, we'll have the nomination, the formal court nomination process of candidates. And then we're going to see our mass citizen campaign that President Nelson Chamisa spoke of in full swing. Now, our goal is to win hearts and minds. We've got a plan, as you'll hear at the launch of our new Great Zimbabwe Blueprint, to build new infrastructure, 
through efficient stewardship of our resources and prudent fiscal management, you're going to be voting for an energy plan that includes credible guarantees to independent power producers, flexible licensing for renewable energy investors, uh, accelerated investments in large-scale power projects, and an overhaul of our transmission networks. I think we all are having trouble with the excessive load shedding, and that's going to be a thing of the past when the citizens win Zimbabwe for change. We're also going to deliver a modern health plan where our budget meets the Abuja Declaration on Budgetary Allocations to Health, keeping our health workers at home through better pay, and harnessing, harnessing the vast talent pool in the private and public sectors. We also have an education plan. As we all know, education is the bedrock of any successful nation. We will ensure that teachers are paid adequately and there's sufficient capital funding in schools and we update our curriculum to make sure that it's fit for purpose. Our farmers will be voting for our agricultural policy, which rewards farmers for their hard work. It does not rob farmers through opaque programs that benefits the elite. Farmers will vote for title deeds to their land and better prices for their crops. We similarly have a mining policy that's going to ensure that we rectify all the anomalies that we currently uh, see in the mining sector, which seems to be benefiting uh, elites through gold smuggling, which is costing the fiscus 100 million US every single month. We're going to see an end to that. And we also have an anti-corruption uh, plan to ensure that there's sincerity in the fight against corruption. Now obviously we note the last minute attempts by Zanupiev to throw trinkets at traditional leaders, our chiefs, at soldiers, at civil servants, but the citizens know how much they've been suffering over the past five years. And what we commit to as the Triple C is restoration of our dignity collectively as Zimbabweans. And so I'll just end with a call to action for the citizens. As always, it's the courage of Zimbabweans that will carry all of us through. We applaud the heroic efforts and defiance of the citizens. We continue to call for the release of Honorable Jobsi Kala, who today uh, has been detained for 275 days. And finally, we continue to encourage everybody to hop onto the One Plus Five campaign. Ensure that all who are around you are registered to vote so that we win Zimbabwe for change. Without further ado, I'm going to defer proceedings to our elections directorate, who today uh, are going to be represented by uh, Ms. Ellen Shiriadenga, who's going to uh, give us an update on the ongoing voter registration bill. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Champion Fazis. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, basically, I will speak to uh, the current uh, voter registration bills. And I'm sure you are all aware that uh, the process commenced on the 12th of, uh, of, of March and is set to end on the 21st of March after 10 days. Uh, our presentation here is to actually make observations and also make uh, proposed recommendations to Zach with respect to the way forward. As you are aware, and also some of you that uh, uh, went through uh, the Zach delimitation report, uh, Zek indicated that uh, there is a deficit of around uh, 2.2 million uh, Zimbabweans uh, that are eligible to register to vote but are not on the voters' roll. And uh, we are hoping, as the Triple C, that these voter registration plates will provide the opportunity for those Zimbabweans that are not on the voters' roll to, uh, to be registered as, vo as voters. The background to this is uh, as we have, also, we have constantly called for the voter registration centers to be accessible to the generality of the population. If you noted uh, before the place, these registration centers were only in the 63 uh, districts uh, of ZEC throughout the country, which in some instances, you know, where people were, people were to, move, to travel, say, for example, uh, uh, Victoria Falls to, to Wange, which is uh, the nearest uh, center, someone needs to travel about 100 kilometers to just get registered, registered. And remember, we are talking about young people who do not have money. And surely they can't, they are not in a position to sacrifice 
10, 20, 20, 25 dollars, you know, to just go and register. So this opportunity of the blitz has come in handy for such people. And uh, we as the Triple C, we've been we have always been on point to say as part of our electoral reforms, let voter the voter registration please be mandatory before any general election. You go to the electoral act, the place is up to the discretion of Zach. Huh? It can come today and say, no, we are not conducting a place. Mm -hmm. But yet there are people out there that will be uh, disfranchised. So we are, we are calling for, for the mandatory uh, blitz before any general election. Uh, with regards to our observation, let me hasten to say uh, there's been a lot of enthusiasm amongst first-time voters. If you, some of you as journalists, we, we bumped into you as we were doing our monitoring, you could note that in some areas there were long queues of young people. Despite the challenges that I'm going to speak to, but some were determined. You know, there was a lot of zeal. There was a lot of excitement. Clearly, young people are determined to be the change agents for Zimbabwe. They are determined to take control of this country. And that can only be done through voter registration. So we are happy and we continue to applaud those young people that have taken the heat from Zach to go and register. And also, as we have uh, the generality of citizens out there you know, that have been all over, you know, encouraging these young people to go and register to vote. And we certainly applaud them for, uh, for that effort. Let me go on uh, to the challenges that uh, I encountered. Firstly, there's the uh, malalignment of the voter registration plates with the identity card issuance uh, plates. I'm sure some of you uh, noted that uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, they actually published a circular, I think it came out two or three days back, to say they are also conducting an IDA issuance place. Of course, that is one of our calls as the triple C to say, let the, it's either the, the Home Affairs Department precedes Zach to issue ID cards and then people will come and register later. Or alternatively, we have some kind of a one-stop shop where people get, register, get uh, issued with IDs from there on, they just get they, they get the opportunity to register as voters. So this is what we have been called. For, we have been calling for. We have noted uh, the the notification from the minister of uh, local government, but however, we are saying it's not enough. We had hoped that uh, Zek was going to sit down with the local government, with the minister of local affairs, uh, local, uh, minister of home affairs, and come up with a, ca a calendar which would actually indicate some concurrence between the two institutions, but clearly that was not done. The danger to this is we will go back to the same dilemma as in um, uh, January 2022 and uh, April 2022 when we had the first and second place. We had a situation where Zach just went ahead first and attempted to register people. Out of a target of uh, 2 million, they only managed to register around 226,000, which was a mega to 8%. And if that, that problem between the two institutions is not addressed, then we, we risk having young people failing to register because they do not have identity card documentation. So this is our call to the uh, Registrar General's Office and to ZEC as well to say, sit down and synchronize your calendars where in where instances where uh, people are not able to access the id documentation let's make arrangements to to give those people that the opportunity uh, also with regards to the challenges uh, the second issue is the the bvra machines uh, malfunctioning we have had uh, quite a number of those instances to an extent that uh, you know you would uh, have a situation like, for example, in Go to Central Road uh, 35, uh, there was one machine in Mabugu uh, Primary School, and that uh, machine uh, malfunctioned, and it only started to work at uh, 3 p.m. Subsequently, 
Zek was only able to register seven people. Because remember this, that the cutoff time for registration is 5 p.m. So there was a long queue of about 40 or 50 people that wanted to register but did not get that opportunity. They were told the ZEC, uh, uh, registration, uh, 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 the ZEC officers would move to, to a neighboring center within the ward, which was Musha, Mushayawano. A registration center. So those 50, 40 people, they went to Mshayavan the following day. And guess what? The machine malfunctioned again. Mm -hmm. And only three people were registered. So that's the challenge that we're facing. It's not only in Goto Central, it's throughout uh, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. With an incident also just across here in uh, Batanai, uh, in Mavuko, same story. So that's, and remember, that's a day lost. This is where we come in today to say, Zek, can you please uh, assist by compensating for the lost time? The other thing is the power issue. You know, of course, uh, uh, Champion Fadi spoke about the power crisis in the country. And it's something that we ought to budget for put up the necessary infrastructure to ensure that uh, you know there's adequate power for one to do whatever you're supposed to do. And in this case, to register voters. And we are seeing instances that uh, in some areas that does uh, solar, those solar uh, systems, but because of weather conditions and then they're not able to, to register voters. So like for example, in uh, Kwazana, Eight primary school, Winyai primary school. Those are some of the examples uh, of H and Mutasa Nyanga and Mutare. Remember also in Tari, the part Manika, then there's a second uh, Fredu, that side. So the weather is kind of uh, erratic. So that affects you know, the solar system. And at the end of the day, you know, the water registration uh, uh, lead times will not wait for that. So this is one of our pleas to say, to say that when we had power cuts, people fail to register to vote. Can you please uh, consider those? Of course, there are issues where Zek in some instances we run out of consumables, like uh, the voter registration slips. So we noted that, but of course, in some instances, Zek would uh, rectify that. But remember, there's stoppage time there. So in time will be more. And the, the primary concern, which we noted, and primarily in our urban areas, mm. is the slow pace mm. of voter registration. You would realize that in some instances, it will take a person uh, 15 to 20 minutes, uh, to 25 minutes to be registered. And uh, by 5 p.m., they could have closed. Literally meaning that, uh, you know, some people would have to stick around <coughs> for three, four, five hours by the voter registration center only to be turned away last minute. So that is one other concern to say we they, there is need to actually speed up the process. And if needs be increase the number of uh, you know the, the BVR machines. And the uh, uh, the the sixth issue is uh, the late starting. You know in some areas uh, they started late and uh, like the first day, they'll pitch the tents the same day <laughs> when the water registration process is supposed to start. So it, that's why yeah, there were challenges in terms of starting time. And it's uh, like, for example, in Glendon, they um, uh, started at 10 a.m. And that's three hours of lost time there. So yeah, that is one of the concerns that uh, we noted. And of course, uh, the the seventh one is the inadequate uh, 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 BVR kits. I think I alluded to that earlier on. And uh, the, the other issue, the eighth one, is uh, the bad weather. You know, we had, uh, like, for example, in Chipinge, because of Cyclone in Afraid, you, you know, it was, the weather was terrible. Nothing could happen, and the rivers are impassable. They are, they, they, they are flooded. So literally, people cannot access those registration centers. So that is one other concern that uh, we, we are bringing up to Zay to say because of the, of the, you know, of the weather patterns, people are not able to, to access uh, the registration centers. And there was another, you know, 
uh, concern that we noted, and it was actually surprising to us. You know, we had instances where some registration officers were were demanding proof of residence uh, from uh, our from the the aspiring registrants. You know, the electoral act speaks to an affidavit to say if one is not. Uh, does not have proof of residence, then that person can be, is give, it should be given an affidavit by ZEC, and ZEC officers, you know, are commissioners of oath that can actually uh, certify those affidavits. But then with instances where uh, some of uh, the registrants, potential registrants, were turned away because of uh, the issue of uh, proof of residence. So I'm sure that issue has been uh, rectified <laughs> because we only heard about it on the first day, but after that uh, we did not. Like, for example, in Mutasa Ward 6, it, that was one of the concerns uh, that our people raised and uh, people were kind of worried about uh, that. And the other issue is, uh, you know, uh, the voter transfers. <coughs> I'm sure before the blitz, some of you noted just across by uh, Cecil House there and Macombe, there was a, an influx of people, you know, from where we wanted, wanted to register to vote. And they clearly, those, some of you as journalists, we interviewed them. Some were coming as far as Koromonzi and we told, no, you need to go and register in Bari there. You know, they were given addresses. So we have a, a lot of, uh, you know, falsified or fraudulent. Uh, you know, voter registration, go, uh, voter transfers are going on. And uh, clearly that is UPF instigated. And as the triple C, we are definitely aware of that because we know for a fact that ZANU-PF is targeting some of uh, the wards here in Arare and in Lawayo, for example, uh, Ward 1, which is the city center. And uh, clearly, you know, we have a situation where people are just passed you know, to go given false addresses uh, to, to actually register in, in World One, for example, in Bulawayo, and we just got uh, a report that uh, even, uh, you know, like the, the vendors, the ED for vendors, whatever, you know, those people, they are, they are given false addresses and made to register in World One in Bulawayo. We are aware of that. And Mari as well, we are aware of that. And this is one concern that we raise in this, uh, the Triple C to say, you know, there's need for them to actually investigate this issue of, uh, you know, misrepresentation uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, addresses. And then the last issue is, uh, you know, there's this uh, organization which they call FALS, uh, Forever Associates of Zimbabwe. Uh, they are aligned to ZANU-PF. They are primary uh, mandate is to profile the voters. It's so bad that we're getting reports, like we're, they've been doing it in rural areas. Now they're doing it in Eben as well. We have had reports even in Mavu, where these very same people were actually taking away voter registration slips of a vote of a registrants that would have just been, uh, you know, uh, uh, that would have, people that would have just been registered. And that is illegal. So that is one issue that we are raising to say, you know, that that is tantamount to, to, to intimidation. And we are raising that concern is the triple C. And we will definitely bring it up with SEC and also if needs be with the law enforcement agents because we have people that had their voter registration slips literally taken away from them by these very same people. Notwithstanding what they've been doing in rural areas, intimidating villagers telling them to vote than PF and threatening them with eviction in their respective, uh, you know, areas. So we are aware of that is the truth. And believe you me, no amount of uh, intimidation will stop the tide of change. The people have had enough. You can intimidate them, you can take away the water registration slip from them, but that will not stop them from going to the ballot box on, on election day and voting the part which they want to vote for. With that as it may, uh, let me speak to the to our to our recommendations or the remedy that uh, we are seeking with respect to the challenges uh, we raised. Firstly, is uh, the extension of uh, the of uh, 
water registration days in uh, the areas that have been affected. Is uh, the triple C when the process of uh, compiling the list of those areas that are affected, for example, like I, earlier on I spoke about, uh, you know, in Chipinge because of a second Friday, you know, there was no registration which took place and the malfunctioning of uh, uh, BVR machines like in Goto Center, for example. So those are some of the examples that we cited, but we are, we are still in the process of compiling the list of those uh, affected areas so that we will try to engage ZEC and see if it possible we can have an, 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 an extension. And it, it just as well, one good thing about it, just yesterday ZEC issued a notice uh, with regards to those uh, technical challenges, which is the triple C, we, we, we definitely do appreciate that. And uh, also the statement which Zek said is, um, is that it, they could ensure that every eligible citizen will be registered. So this is why, this is the premise where we are coming from is the triple C, to say, Zek, uh, please live up to your, to your, to your promise of ensuring that every citizen, eligible citizen will be registered and we are approaching you for, to, to see if we can have a, 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 a way of making sure that the disfranchised people uh, get the opportunity to register as voters as um, stated in section 67 of our constitution. And then the other thing is uh, would we would want to implore Zach to actually uh, increase, extend the operating hours beyond 5 p.m. Particular, you know, like on election day, our, our law is clearly says, say by 7 p.m. we are still in the queue. Then you can cast your vote as long as you are within the, you know, the polling station. Let the same law apply to voter registration. As long as it's 5 p.m. but still in the registration center, we kindly request that. Uh, to actually ensure that the people that will be within the, the registration center will be given uh, the opportunity to register regardless if it's 5 p.m. Uh, or not. So we've uh, actually returned to ZEC with that request and we are yet to hear uh, uh, their response. And of course, uh, uh, we, uh, the, the third request is to ask ZEC to increase uh, the number of BVR kids, particularly in areas where there is a uh, high demand. For example, we speak of uh, Headcliff uh, and uh, airport, because there are long queues and you realize there's only one machine, one or two machines there, so which is pretty inadequate. So we implore Zach to consider increasing the number of uh, BVR machines. And of course, uh, the issues of uh, violence, uh, I know it's not a prerogative of Zach, but uh, with respect to the uh, law enforcement agents, I think there's a lot of intimidation going on. We kindly request the law enforcement agents to make sure that uh, uh, it deploys its personnel around uh, the voter registration centers. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much uh, to the Elections Directorate, represented today uh, by Ms. Ellen Shiriel Enga. Thank you for that uh, update on the voter registration place. Now, as is our custom, we're going to open the floor up to any questions you might have. Uh, as the media, as usual, may you please put up your hand, identify yourself in your news house, and then ask one question so that we can have as many as possible. So, the floor is open. Yes, sir. Uh, I am Kudzai from TechMech TV. Uh, recently, we went to Makombe on a fact filing mission. We wanted to see how the registration is going. And we spoke to a couple of people, and they indicated that they had been forced much to go and register. Some of them indicated that uh, their businesses had been shut down. You as a party, what are you going to do to ensure that such incidents do not continue to occur? Because these are people who will be working and then their life will be disrupted by such incidents. Yeah. So obviously for the avoidance of doubt, we don't coerce people. The people who uh, support and follow the Triple C do so on a voluntary basis. And President Chamisa just last week in his agenda statement says that while Zanu PF plans to rig, we plan to, to win. We plan to win hearts and minds. So it's never our um, 
uh, methods the triple C to yes, those people in close. So it was ZANU PF, yes, exactly. So we continue obviously to call upon ZANU PF. You know, stop these dirty tactics. You don't close someone's stall down because they don't support you. You deliver on your mandate to the people. And if anything, it demonstrates beyond any doubt that ZANU PF has lost support. By the time you have to grab someone by the collar and say, come and register to vote for me so that you can continue to sell your tomorrow, it means you've completely lost the battle already. And as the triple C, of course, we say no to violence. We say, obviously, those, uh, you know, the Constitution is quite clear around dignity and freedom. You can't force anyone. You can't compel someone to associate against their will. And we call upon the relevant state institutions to step in. There is a code of conduct for political parties, which ZEC is, uh, you know, at law responsible for ensuring that political parties comply with. That sort of conduct is obviously uh, proscribed. It's forbidden. And we call upon ZEC to perform its mandate. We've got uh, several... Uh, institutions in terms of the constitution that are supposed to step in to stop that sort of behavior. You've got your National Peace and Reconciliation Commission, you've got your Human Rights Commission. We're absolutely surprised and flabbergasted at the Triple C that they're not doing their job. This is where they should step in. We shouldn't be seeing FAS at every registration center. We should be seeing the NPRC encouraging all citizens that, look, we're all Zimbabweans. At the end of the day, all we want, certainly as the Triple C, is to see a better Zimbabwe. So these acts of coercion definitely must stop. And we say, you know, the triple C, that citizens must not be forced in this way. Do right by the people and the people will support you. You don't want to govern by force. You want to govern because the citizens want you there. Uh, and so we obviously send a message to Zanupir that, look, uh, you, we know you failed. We want elections. We don't want war. And we know that Zanupir can never win a free and fair election in Zimbabwe. Yes, sir. You spoke of extension. Do you have any daily number of days that you want to extend? Not at this stage, but we are saying, uh, focusing particularly on those affected areas. For example, you look at Gotu, they lost a day. So we expect that particular ward or that registration center to have another day where they are able to register their people. And just in addition to that, I think the Constitution and the electoral law are quite clear that voter registration is an ongoing process. Uh, you know, I think we've made it clear ever since we started our election watch updates that ZEC should actually be having accessible voter registration centers at all times. It shouldn't be the case that you have to move to another town in order to register to vote. And sometimes people have to walk 10, 20, 30 kilometers. That should never be the case. And you've got a number of centers, even within Harare, where people uh, in an entire community constituency don't have adequate centers and also to ensure that they're accessible. So certainly as a matter of law, they're entitled to continue registering people until proclamation. Why don't they do that? They've been given funding. We don't see, uh, you know, why the obligation in terms of, I believe it's, I think it's section 155 or 6 of the constitution, they've got a duty, a constitutional obligation to have ongoing voter registration and they should be true to that. Uh, the right to vote that uh, Ms. Trudy has spoke to enshrined in section 67 must be fully facilitated uh, by ZEC and so we call upon them to do that. It's not normal, it's a scandal to have over 2 million eligible voters. This is not counting those in the diaspora, not on the voters' roll. They should do everything within their power to ensure that those people get onto the voters' roll. Yes, sir. are there any women journalists who want to ask a question? Ma'am, she's there. Yes, ma'am. My name is Lucy Yassim. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lucy Yassim. I'm a freelance journalist. Yes. Uh, uh, Ms. Ellen Shiri made reference to the intimidation that is being perpetrated to aspire and register and uh, having their registration slips taken from them. Number one, I would like to know what is the party doing? to address that. You know the perpetrators, you know the individuals that have their slips taken. And then um, number two, is there any education that you're giving to the voters, regardless of their party affiliation, to understand that their, that slip is theirs? Thank you very much, Ms. Asini. I'm going to defer to Ms. Julia Lenga, but just before I do, for the avoidance of doubt, 
the obligation at law to maintain security of person, of property, is with the police. And we've consistently made reports to the, to the police when these incidents have arisen. We've even reported to ZEC because they've got the obligation in terms of the code of conduct to make sure that's done. So we actually have elect, uh, voter registration monitors and peace monitors at every single uh, registration centre in Zimbabwe trying to uh, you know, protect these people. But obviously we have no right to stop violence when it uh, takes place. You even saw reports of uh, ZEC officials being beaten up by ZANU PF, uh, you know, uh, member. So all of that is the responsibility of the police. We're surprised when the police don't quickly step in with the same speed and alacrity we see when they, you know, see Honorable Chibaya having a meeting in Budiriru. We want to see that same energy by the police to make sure that uh, voters are, are protected, prospective voters. And when it comes to education, as the Triple C, we are going door to door in every village, on every street, educating citizens about their rights. We have said time and again, your vote is your secret. Nobody has got the power to force you to go anywhere to force you to vote. So that voter education campaign is ongoing. And in addition to that, in our voter registration drive, we don't discriminate. Even if we see a bus of Zanupia, we give them the flyers telling them where the centers are. We want every citizen to be on that voters' roll. We're not just campaigning to triple C members. President Chamisa said in his agenda address that ours is a citizen campaign. Every single person, regardless of your political party, we're going to fight for every single vote. So we're going to, we've actually, uh, you know, gone beyond just our traditional structures and strongholds and those who are perceived to be triple C. We're going to everybody, everybody. And we continue to call upon everybody. Doesn't matter where you are, if you're a soldier, if you're a teacher, a civil servant, even if you're a minister and you're sick and tired of the rot, the poverty and injustice and corruption, we call upon you, register to vote so that your voice is heard. Okay, uh, thank you. Now, Tim Clinton is in the way, thank you. I think he, oh, oh, champion for to say, for the way, the word Indonesia is in the Ragnum de Puma police station, and the way in the Amma police are being called. So, we say, oh, cool, and you will be the Maposan team, Indonesia, but he says, oh, would ever find a lava have a fast way to say. And the Latin wound is so, and yes, Gava, yes, Gava. Silaya locusing at Tingama peace monitors. Avan to Avanetisa Ubona Utulo Utula Escavi, Mova Sinaz, the Lutin Jane Vanda, who laugh and to bed Avan name Avay to Sailor. So Lava Avant Umsevens of Mohuano Utulo Utula. And then Jalo is a Kuluman Jalo Tina Jane Vanda, we made sure Uti OM Pilo, M Pilo, Cancel, Lama citizens at Wonke Avant. So Education. Right, my President Nelson Chamis Makataura, I think last week, per agenda, per Makapa, for the year 2023, put here a panamuna, and Otara ear put in Jukuda, Kumizaban, Van, the elections directorate, Kanati Kings, Wakunzi, Van Vakarwa, 
nani saka it's not a question ye kuti munhu anotsara kuti ini ndokuda kumirira kwakati ndokuda kumirira kwakati vanotorwa that is not the triple c way and we condemn that uh, that is something that will be dealt with internally but we have no space for that hatisikuda bongozozwa hatisikuda vanhu vanonetsa mapanya ye candidate selection kana usiri kudiwa nevanhu hausi kuzopinda Muna kudiwa nevanu ndia chapinda hatisikuda imposition yema candidates hakuna imposition ichaitika hapana munhu whether no zvi impose kana uta no impose wane vanu vana tsikuita zvekumanikidzira this time we want to have a transparent community candidate selection template oh yeah template yo ya isati ya tumbo publicize waka saka isi mwoto shamsika kana uti munu ala kuti ndiri aspiring uri aspiring kupi in terms of which rules ma rules hacha hata tabuda miri rai munu wese and it's open to all citizens it's the process is open to all citizens to stand saka president chamisa said this is not a party project it's a movement citizen project a citizen movement project saka hapana kuti ai wa ndiri fadzi ndiri we triple c ndinchan hakuna zvakadaro gore rino munhu wese is going to be subjected to that process munhu wese achatomirira kuti kuzonzwa there's going to be an independent body i think tichazopakurirwa mazuva ari kutera kuti zvichafamba sei but vanhu ngava mire musari wepachini there's no point because you might not even come pa list yema nominees saka hapana munhu angatonzi aspiring ari kuda Muna anoita izvozvo muna anenge atobura buda mugwara rero re citizens movement and they're not part of us they can't be part of us if they behave like that and obviously the law enforcement agents must always deal with violence we have no room for violence under the triple c Yes. Yeah, give it all the okay, okay, okay. Just, just come all there right. so that we can all hear you. Okay, yeah. so given uh, all the challenges that you are facing and say, are you ready? Are you still, are you ready for the election? Given all the challenges that you are facing and all these breaches. So, without a doubt, we have said, I think since the Triple C was announced on the 24th of January 2022, that we've been preparing for this election from day one. A boycott is out of the question. Where there are issues and glitches and administrative challenges, it's up to ZEC to ensure that it complies with the Constitution. And we're going to mount serious pressure upon them to do that. We've got an electoral reform agenda, which is being championed currently by our members of parliament. Uh, you know, it's a fallacy that the Triple C doesn't want reforms. In fact, since, uh, you know, the beginning, in fact, since the 2018 election, President Nelson Chamisa has been clear that we need reforms. You recall under the old MDC alliance, there was the reload document. When we became the Triple C, we're the only bullet there was price under the MDC alliance. But then when the new movement was formed on the 24th of January, he was very clear in the 2022 agenda that we've got a reform agenda. We're the only political party that's been talking about reforms. We're the only political party that managed to put pressure on ZEC to ensure that they run things like this voter registration blitz. We're the only political party that's been pushing for reform to the Electoral Act. And so we continue to push for those reforms. But guess what? Elections are like Christmas. You don't say no, I'm certain that they hand Christmas, like Christmas, Christmas is going to come regardless. The Constitution says elections have to happen every five years. So it's incumbent upon all citizens. We have to get ready. As the Triple C, we're sharpening our tools. We said that the, the by-elections will be our dry run. We're ensuring that we defend the vote. We've got polling agents and we do everything on our part to ensure that we're ready. But what's out of the question is postponing, deferring the election. I mean, that sort of mantra is, by, is done by people who are anti-constitution, anti-democracy, and anti the will of the people. You can't be scared of the voice of the people if you're a true Democrat. I hope that, you that answers you. Yes, I think we'll take one more. Yes, ma'am. Uh, speaking of uh, the electoral process, there's a, a presentation that was made last week. Actually, somebody was just sharing at, a, at an event, and this person has been an election agent, a chief elections agent, and he was narrating the role, he was speaking about the role of the military, how they were treated during the 2008 election and 2018 election. And you're saying you're still going to the election when there is this clearly uh, evidence that the military is always involved it has the same, it has the same in announcing the results. So obviously we call for a demilitarized process, and I think the Triple C has been the only voice that's called for reform 
to ZEC. We've called for a reform to the ZEC Secretariat. In fact, we forced the admission on the part of ZEC to say uh, the, the percentage of military or ex-military personnel that they had. That's obviously something that's unconstitutional. Anything that stands in the way of a free and fair election should not be tolerated. And it's incumbent upon those state institutions to comply with the Constitution. The Constitution is supreme. It has to be done. When we say we're ready, I mean, it's not the responsibility of the Triple C to run elections. It's the responsibility of the Triple C to mobilize citizens, to energize the base, to ensure that we've got candidates that are selected by the people, ethical, competent leaders. It's our responsibility in getting ready to ensure that we've got an alternative policy plan. And where it comes to our prerogative at the, tri at the Triple C, we are ready. Of course, there must be reform in this, in this country across all sectors, but particularly in terms of the elections. And the state institutions who've got the constitutional mandate for that, those are the people to whom the question should be directed, are you ready? If you're not ready, what are you doing to ensure that you're ready? You don't have a choice in the matter. Nobody has the right to take away the citizen's right to vote. It's constitutionally enshrined. So even if the triple C were to say today we're not ready, we are, that does not stop, or that cannot stand in the way of the, the right of citizens to vote. Zeb can't take away the right to vote. Zamukir can't take away the right to vote. No, no person, no institution has got that sort of power. And so we continue to say to every institution, whether it's to Zeb, the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission, Parliament, everybody, must be ready for this upcoming election. Everybody must ensure that they do what's required to be done so that we have a constitutional election that's free and fair, so that for once we've got a government that's voted in for the people, a government that puts the needs of the people's people first, a government that doesn't invest only in cars, but that invests in ambulances, a government that pays money to ensure that health workers have what they need to deliver health care, a government that ensures that education is taken care of, a government that cares about whether or not the masses eat, not a government where only just a few people are looting gold. That's what we're fighting for, and we know that it's the cycle of disputed elections that continues to see Zimbabwe in the crisis that we're in now. We're causing problems even beyond our borders. We're creating a whole migration crisis in South Africa uh, in other countries. That should not happen. It's not normal, as President Chamisa has said, to have five million of your citizens running away because they're hungry, running away because they can't get power, running away from potholes, running away from getting beaten by the police. You can't have that in a constitutional democracy. And it's, we are sick and tired of Zimbabwe being the sick man of Africa. We need to restore uh, our status is the jewel of Africa, and that's something that's going to be uh, discussed at great length in our new Great Zimbabwe Blueprint. The restoration agenda is key to a better Zimbabwe. So, on that note, let's continue to register to vote. Let's ensure that we also, if we were already registered, add five more people to the voters' roll so that we win the nation for change. Thank you.